before we start the starter motor removal and replacement, I want to make a point. This starter motor was removed from the engine and bench tested just fine. The problem turned out to be a switch. The internal components of this enclosed switch were actually providing sufficient resistance to current flow that although it could engage the starter, it couldn't turn the starter over. Prior to removing and replacing a starter or bench testing it, you might want to actually bypass all switches to a battery that you know is good prior to the actual removal and replacement of the starter. Now, let's get started. Well, I have a starting problem with my boat. I turn the keys on, and we obviously have battery power. Throttles are in the neutral position. The port engine will start just fine. Starboard engine, we get just a click. So we've checked all our electrical connections. The voltages are good. Batteries are good. Battery switches are good. So we take off the engine. Let's see if we can determine what the problem is. To get a good look at the starter right down in here, I'm going to have to take this little fancy cover off the top. It's just held on with about five of these nice rubber mounted attachment points. So, pull it up off of there. So here I find the starter partially engaged yet never turned over. So you can see how it's engaged in the flywheel. But again, we never heard the engine crank over. I don't think it's a starting problem. Obviously, we can't even get the thing to crank over. It must just be a start earth problem. So we'll run a couple of tests. Before we continue here, I want to check to make sure our battery connections are clean and tight. Do a quick voltage check on this system. And as you can see, we got a good voltage here. So, I can assume the batteries are in good shape. We're going to take and try and release this starter drive from the flywheel. It taps. And you see it drops away from the flywheel. Nice easy movement on the starter. So if we give our starter motor just a little bit of a wrap. Trust me, I've done this on a $12 million jet. It may encourage those brushes to spring down against commutator and start working again. And we'll try our test again. Switches back on. And give it a start. That click we heard obviously is what engages the starter drive into the flywheel. And that's all it did. Started to not turn over. And most likely it's a problem with the brushes or something there. Not getting good electrical connection to that starter. Or Starter's dead. That being the case, we're going to remove this intake shroud to get to our starter motor and see if we can be assured that all the contacts are properly attached and clean for this starter motor. So we'll start out by removing this front, what I'd call, breather cover. And it has a few number 10 millimeter bolts around the perimeter. I'm hoping that once I get this thing removed, it'll come off easily here and I don't have to remove my zip ties or this tube at all. So we'll start off by just loosening these. And as we take the last one off, we'll note that all four bolts are the exact same length, which sure makes it easier to put back together. The only other thing we have to be concerned with is we do have a little breather hose we have to remember to put back on. And there's a little cannon plug that has to be put back onto this particular attachment. Press and release. That's easy enough. And as for this over here, we can actually just get it out of our way. There we go. Now we have access to the starter mounts. To get better access to the electrics of the starter motor, I'm going to take this intake shroud off um, just to check to make sure the connections are good. This is not that terribly difficult. There's only four number 12s in the back holding it on, along with a number 10 buried in here, and along with a couple other number 10s, and then the whole thing comes off. So, get started on that. The good news is, all of these bolts are the same size. 
whether they're the number 10s or 12s, they're all the same size, so it makes no difference where they are put back in. Once your number 10s and 12s are all undone, you'll notice that the thing just literally falls out of the area. Keep in mind, though, if you still have that bolt up in this particular hole, don't lose it, don't drop it. And we'll just take it out of there. And we have access to all our starter electrical connections. Well, as I'd imagined, all these connectors look like they're brand new, like right off the Boeing factory. Nice, tight, so it's not a function of uh, corroded or disconnected attachment points. The good news is we now have all three of our starter motor mount bolts available to us and we can dismount the starter. And unfortunately, at this point in time, we can't do any tests because we have the intake manifold off and we cause ourselves some trouble. Of course, before we get started with this process, we make sure all power is off and there is no DC voltage to any of the connectors. We'll start out by disconnecting the power attachment points and then we'll remove the starter motor and do any tests on the bench. With the exception of the solenoid power control unit, we've disconnected all the electrics. We'll move on to the three mounting bolts and actually dismount the starter itself. We'll get back to the power control wire shortly. Once again, all three bolts are the exact same length, which makes it a whole lot easier to put back together. Comes off. And the last, like I say, is to remove the solenoid power control wire. Now, as you can see, this is a hard mount, so we have to trace this wire back to solenoid power control wire attachment point in the engine itself and disconnect it there uh, short of uh, cutting and splicing the wire which I don't care to do so we just have to take these connectors off voila our starting motor try running a few tests on it in the garage the reinstallation of the starter motor will be almost the reverse order of uh, removing it from the engine. Uh, although, I will wait for the solenoid power switch wiring after I get the starter installed on the engine using the same original bolts. Good news, all of them exact same size, so I don't have to worry about which goes where. Just three of them. Once we have these three bolts torqued down, I'll then work on feeding that solenoid power wire back to its proper location. That's just as simple as following it back down this harness again <clears throat> and then up through this curve and back through these tie wraps I didn't bother to cut. I should be able to fish it through there without too much trouble. And from there it goes through this little shroud into its attachment bolt along with this other power control wire. Once I get those two wires lined up here, put the lockdown nut in position and screw it back into the location and the side of the engine where we originally disconnected it. I always like giving electrical connections a little, a little corrosion protection hit before I bury it all again and put the fancy cover over the attachment point. Now <clears throat> reassembly this first bolt here was just actually like the positive connection from the solenoid to the starter so we'll just quickly spin that on and the other one is this positive connection to the positive side of the solenoid. And we'll spin that on. Of course, making sure each one of these gets locked down nice and tight. And once again, a little corrosion protection. And then we'll recover the, the wires. And then from there, it's just a matter of re-tie wiring these with these fancy ties that they have. So the next thing we'll do is reinstall that intake manifold. Taking the intake manifold, obviously there's only one right side. This goes towards the front where I have four, four attachment bolts. And we just put it in position and reinstall our bolts. I'll 
start off with one of these aft bolts, maybe that'll be the easiest. And then I'll take one of these number 10s here in the front. Hopefully that'll help me line up all the rest of the bolts as I put them in. Again, all the bolts are the exact same size. Don't have to worry about which one goes where. That should make the process a little easier. And we have our four to the bolts for it as well. Shove it in and close it. And remember, we we'll connect our gator tube here. Looking right here, round oil fill, we snap this guy back into place, and we should be good to go for a test run. And of course our final test to make sure the starter works properly. That's quite sufficient. Very good. Now we'll finish up with reinstalling the flywheel cover and the engine cover itself. Did I mention, I always like to do a little anti corrosion protection. Everything except for the fan belts, of course. Concentrating mostly on the electrical. Always good in this salt water environment. Flywheel cover, once again, just goes on with its little fancy rubber attachment points just to press onto place. Give those engine cover holding points a little anti corrosion protection as well. Let me install the cover. Lock it down. That's it. Let's go boating.